Good morning my friends, this is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing to you Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes for the Nintendo Switch. To say that I was excited for this game is an understatement, as I have played, beaten, and reviewed every single Nintendo Warriors game to date, including all the Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors games, and even played a little bit of the Switch version of Fire Emblem Warriors, and I'm also a diehard Fire Emblem fan, especially Three Houses. So to sort of see this big amalgamation of series if you can say that, was a dream come true for me, especially because I thought Age of Calamity was one of the most ingenious ideas for a story that Nintendo has ever come up with. And this one is more so an alternate retelling of Three Houses as opposed to trying to give a canonical backstory, which is totally fine because it means that if you haven't played Three Houses, you can, for the most part, jump into this without being too confused. However, I don't want to spend too much of this review talking about the story because I've only gotten two endings so far and this is a really big game and it'll probably take me a while to get to the other houses. So I'll just talk about how it starts and then leave you from there. So you play as a mercenary named Shez. You can choose either male or female and your mission is that you want to take down the Ashen Demon, aka the most hated Smash character, aka Byleth, aka a lot of AKAs in here whatever gender you choose and whatever name you choose and then you realize that you've got this mysterious power that allows you to all of a sudden go super saiyan and take on everyone and you have this voice in your head kind of like how Byleth did and that's about where I'm gonna leave off eventually you meet the house leaders and then you get to choose which of the three houses at Garrick Mach Monastery you want to join and depending on that as well as choices within the houses will affect the storyline now, Warriors games aren't particularly known for having deep storylines. It's more so of just the thrill of beating up hundreds of enemies at once, and this game definitely delivers. Although, the story and world building is actually surprisingly good for a Warriors game. You get plenty of information about the culture of Fodlan, and you even can find documents lying around that'll give you even more background of all of these countries and continents and wars and all that stuff. So I really appreciate that Nintendo and Intelligent Systems were so closely involved in making sure that Team Ninja and Omega Force could make this as authentic of an experience as possible. So let's talk about the gameplay since we've spent about three minutes talking about the story. The gameplay is pretty much the same as every other Warriors game. You control four warriors switching between them one at a time and you fight on hundreds of enemies at once while doing over-the-top flashy maneuvers to take them out. A lot of times the small enemies hardly put up a fight, but it's just fun to plow through them like you're mowing down the grass. But then you'll get the harder units like the commanders, which put up a little bit more of a fight, so then you'll have to learn how to dodge and use your special abilities. And I found that this was pretty exhilarating. A lot of it was muscle memory at this point, like every Hyrule Warriors slash Fire Emblem Warriors game has required you to dodge. And so that became second nature. But what makes this particular game special is that it incorporates a lot of elements from three houses and sort of puts them into a Warriors context. So, for example, you have weapon specials that decrease your weapon's durability, just like Three Houses did. You can pair up with another unit and have benefits such as the unit attacking randomly or blocking an attack, just like Three Houses did, and so on and so on. The game gradually explains its mechanics to you, sometimes very in-your-face and interrupting the action, even when I told the game not to. So this game is very insistent on making sure that you really understand how it works. In between all the battling, you go to a camp. And in the camp, you can move around in 3D space and interact with all the characters there, as well as some facilities that allow you to buy stuff, to train more, to even have some social outings with the units. And this is where the Three Houses elements really come into play. 
as you have so many resources and opportunities to make the game more towards your liking. You can customize the classes of your units, and the class system more or less affects the moveset that you have, as I think one criticism of the original Fire Emblem Warriors was that the movesets were too similar, and that's sort of doubly so in this new entry, as all of the thieves are going to have the same abilities, and all of the soldiers, and you get the picture. However, I do like that, unlike the first Fire Emblem Warriors, you have much more freedom of customizability, as you can choose which battalions go with each unit, you can choose a shield and a weapon, and you can choose their classes, and you can even unlock additional classes, though unlike three houses, you don't have to go through a bunch of hoops to get to that point. As long as you have enough stars unlocked on the original tier, you can just use the appropriate seal, either intermediate, advanced, or master, to unlock that class. Some of the things that you can do at the camp involve buying items such as food to cook meals with your units, items that you can give your units to increase your support points and their morale, which overall increases their attack power on the battlefield. And one of the coolest things about this camp is that you get a certain amount of activity points that you can use towards bonding with your allies. So you can invite two allies to share a meal with you, also you can invite two allies to do chores together, or you can even go on expeditions where you take one of your units onto an outdoor outing where you get to bask in the scenery which looks way better than the rest of the graphics in this game for some reason, and you can talk to that unit and they will ask a question or answer a question of yours and then you choose what your reply is and they'll either like it or dislike it. And if you do really well then you can move around that unit in 3D space, albeit being not as creepy as you were in Fire Emblem Fates. And this is pretty cool, although I found myself spamming the talk option instead of asking questions, because after you've hit the right answer for a conversation piece, then the game will say this isn't the right response for all of the wrong answers, so I found that this was easier to make it progress more. Overall, I really like the support system in this game, as supports already have existed from the beginning, at least in American Fire Emblem games. And I'm glad to say that this game is no exception, as the characters in Three Houses were some of the most fleshed out in the entire series, with having individual food preferences and class preferences and all of that. And this game does a great job of conveying that through the supports, and I'm really glad that they feel just as fleshed out as they do in Three Houses. Admittedly, not every unit is treated the same when it comes to supports. Some units will only have two or one support, whereas in Three Houses you would always get at least three, possibly four, if you married someone. To my knowledge, there's not really a marriage system in this game, so you don't have to worry about trying to woo people constantly. It's more so if you really want to get to know that unit and see how two of them get along with each other. As far as support benefits, they say that they exist. I didn't notice any differences, but I did notice that the game did get much easier toward the end, maybe just because I was able to spend gold to level up my units. That's another great way to train, is you also have training points in addition to activity points, which you can use at the training grounds to artificially level up your units, as well as have them sparring together to further increase support points. So overall, it seems like the monastery or camp activities in this game are more geared toward the support conversations and building up relationships, which was a key factor in Three Houses, and I'm glad to see that it carried over here. Now between battles, you have a war map, and you'll have your main objective at the end of the map, and then you'll have to complete various side objectives to get to that main battle. This I found had mixed results. On one hand, it does feel more like you're traveling through Fodlin, and you'll often be able to run into NPCs that'll say like, hey, thanks for getting rid of the bandits for us, here's some rewards for you. And yes, this game does have an achievement system, but unlike achievements on the competing consoles, these ones 
actually give you in-game rewards for doing the achievement, so it's actually good to seek them down. But the flip side to this is that the game felt a little bit grindy. Like, there are certain side quests that you have to do, whereas they were always optional in other Warriors games. And sometimes the game even makes you feel terrible if you didn't do enough side quests because you'll unlock various strategies. And these strategies can be used to offset the battle in certain ways, such as closing off your main base's gate so that it's harder for the enemies to infiltrate or being able to persuade enemy units to join your team, such as if you're fighting students from other houses. But if you don't gather enough of those from the side quests, then you might end up killing a unit. Speaking of which, just like in Three Houses, you can choose between casual and classic mode. Casual mode meaning that if a unit dies during battle, they'll return the next chapter, whereas in classic mode, from chapter 4 onward, if a unit dies, they're dead for good. And this game isn't quite as generous with giving you new units as Three Houses was, so you really need to prioritize making sure that your units stay safe. And you can't switch between casual and classic mode on the fly during a save file, so you really have to make sure that you know what you're doing. And there's no divine pulse in this game to retake your moves, although the game is pretty generous with its checkpoints, allowing you to choose when you want to reset the battle. Overall, I found that if you look past the grinding and the sometimes very repetitious combat, Three Hopes is a very fun game. They had a few interesting twists and turns in the story, and even if certain things that Three Houses took its time to establish were really rushed in this game, I felt like the game slowed down much more once it got farther on, and this is much better of a story than a typical Warriors game. Granted, Nirvana Initiative came out on the same day as this, and that game blew this story out of the water, so it might be a little bit of an unfair comparison, but I do eventually intend on doing a full story review of all of the paths once I complete them, although that is going to be on my new Patreon page. Before I get into the Patreon stuff, my past self almost forgot to talk about this game's production values, so I'll just quickly go over what I think about the graphics, voice acting, and sound effects. The graphics are kinda hideous, like with the exceptions of the expeditions, this looks more or less like a Three Houses ripoff, which I'm sure was the point of what they were trying to do, was make it feel like an authentic Three Houses game, but it just doesn't look good at all. I know people give Pokemon Sword and Shield a hard time and say, but those people also defend Three Houses. I'm not one of those people. I thought Three Houses looked terrible way before I saw Pokemon Sword and Shield, so I definitely do not give this game a pass. Although at least I do appreciate that the proportions are much more realistic than those of Fire Emblem Awakening, and that the characters will actually turn their heads to look at each other and make gestures, which was already a thing in Three Houses, so it's a step up from previous Fire Emblem games. Sound-wise, this game does really well, with the voice actors all returning from Three Houses except for the guy that played Kostas, because he passed away. And even Billy Kamitz reprised his role as Ferdinand shortly before he passed away. So, wow, what a game to go on. He also played a role in Nirvana Initiative, which came out the same day. So are those games now forever cursed? And I feel like most of the voice actors still didn't lose their touch after all these years, except for Zachary T. Rice, who plays Raphael. He still does a good job, but it sounded like he was really straining to get back into the role. But overall, once I got used to him, I was like, yep, that's the Raphael that I know. And then as far as the music, I found that most of it was incredible, as the game primarily used real instruments for almost every single song. Some of the Three Houses remixes for the battles were a little bit rockish for my tastes, but they still sounded really good. Like, I was just like, oh gosh, what are they doing to these classic Zelda tunes with the original Hyrule Warriors? But in this game, they do a lot better of a job of mixing orchestra with rock. And when you're on the map giving orders to your units, the music feels more like a soft orchestra than the rock. So it's nice that you get a variation 
and overall I just found that the soundtrack was really stellar. It may not be as good as the original Three Houses OST, but it still suits its purpose. So with that, let's wrap this up and get into the Patreon stuff. So with that, I will call it a day for now. Let me know down in the comment sections if you have any questions, concerns, or critiques. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Although before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to my current patrons, Splat Cat and Sploon Ghost, for supporting me on Patreon. Sploon Ghost actually helped me set up the Patreon because certain elements of it were a little bit confusing. So I hope you'll give them support on their Twitch channels and Sploon's various artistry contributions. And if you want to join my Patreon, the link will be in the description. So with that, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you around. Bye!